What's up, Military Millionaires? I'm your host, David Parade. Today we have an exciting episode about how getting to rank in Google will bring in leads while you sleep and make you all sorts of money. This is with my buddy, Keith Gillespie, a fellow Marine stationed out here with me. This is your first time listening. Thanks for joining the community. This podcast is produced every week for your enjoyment. And show notes are found at militarymillionaire.com slash podcast. Now relax and enjoy the show. You're listening to the Military Millionaire Podcast, a show about real estate investing for the working class. Stay tuned as we explore ways to help you improve your finances, build wealth through real estate, and become a person that is worth knowing. Hey, welcome to the show, everybody. Today, I'm here with a special guest. This is Keith Gillespie. Keith is a sergeant in the Marine Corps Band out here in Kaneohe Bay with me. Uh, Keith and I met at one of my events and obviously we hit it off because we're both Marines and we've hung out a couple times since then. And he has been hustling since I met him, but he has done something super cool in the last three to four months. He is, he ranks number one in Google for all of his search terms for wholesaling and it is bringing him a ton of business. And we want to talk about technology and how it's shaping the future. So Keith, welcome aboard. Tell us a little bit about yourself. All right. Well, I'm a, I'm an active duty Marine. I'm, I'm pretty young. I'm 23 years old. Um, I joined the Marine Corps when I was 17. Uh, so I've been in for six years, been married for five, got two kids. Um, I originally started um, real estate in Virginia and then just brought it out here uh, to Hawaii when we, when we PCS almost two years ago. Right on. So what's your niche? What's your Ooh, that's a, so technology based. A lot of people, um, they enjoy, or I, I guess a lot of our instructors, right? In the real estate realm, they kind of preach direct mail, uh, signs, magnets, postcards, door hangers, um, business cards, whatever that, that type of stuff, all, all of it's tangible, all of it's hard. And, uh, and that's great. You know, that's, that's the way that it used to be. However, uh, I'm realizing, um, you can't, you can't track it as effectively. You can't see metrics. And if you can't track it you, and you can't, uh, you can't, you can't graph it. Um, you, you know, your, your business is, is based on KPIs and, and that's going to be uh, difficult if you're sending out thousands of postcards. And I have, I've spent, a, I've spent, you know, uh, I'm getting really, really close to $25,000 of just, freaking postcards in addition to all of these other things that I already mentioned. So I'm not talking um, blindly. I've done it. Uh, but what, what I'm seeing and it comes naturally, right? Cause I'm young. What, what do we call me? We call me uh, a millennial, right? Don't so you, technology comes you gotta bring in, that word in here, right? You gotta bring that. It, <laughs> uh, that's the first time I've ever used it. I think. <laughs> so uh, it, it comes, it, I've grown up with it. So uh, that's kind of the, the thing that comes easy to me and I foresee it being the future um, because data shows that it's part of the future. Yeah. Uh, so that's what I'm using. I, and I, w- I would say that that's my niche is, is bringing technology into the field. So now I am going to throw out there that when I first met you, you were running a direct mail sweatshop out of your basement. Holy crap. So I really you gotta, was. you gotta expound on that for just a second. Okay. If you said, I know what I'm talking about, but this like had me just laughing so hard Dude. when you were telling me about, now mind you, we'd had a, drinks because my first meetups were uh, yeah but this was hilarious to me so that's please. funny that you remember that okay oh, yeah. so so i've done i actually keep a, a list i just i i have a a thing for failing faster so i keep one of every direct mail piece i've ever sent out you know like the ones that get returned it's the wrong address or whatever i'll send one to myself as a seed so i know when they get sent to so i have uh in my cabinet here next to me is a, a piece of direct mail from every mailer i've put out and I have tried so many different companies. I've tried doing it myself. I've tried letters. I've tried postcards. I've tried handwritten stuff, lined piece of paper, super expensive paper. Um, so, but the sweatshop story is uh, I was trying to do it myself because I was spending like a dollar nineteen on all of my letters, and I'm like, Damn, dude, this is so freaking expensive. I'm trying to pump out like four thousand a month, uh, and I. I don't make that much money. So let's, let's freaking figure out a, a way to make this cheaper. And I, I went to 
the store and I bought some really cheap lined paper. Uh, I got a, a software that like analyzes my handwriting, puts it into a font that I can upload into my computer, learned how to, uh, oh, I forget what it's called, be pulling from, uh, it's called direct mail, direct variable data mail merge from an Excel spreadsheet to form fill into a, uh, a Word document. So it's, it's as um, personalized as it can be. It has their name, their address, all the information, depending on the, the list that you are purchasing or scrubbing, um, you can get different ones. So anyway, uh, I, I needed, I tried to do it myself and it took me about two months. It took me almost two months to get my first set out. So after that, I was like, dude, I'm not doing this again. This is crazy. So I brought uh, four Marines over and two of their spouses. And I was like, guys, I'll pay you $10 an hour and give you monsters and pizza. So this is a freaking All you Marines need, right? heaven. Yeah. And uh, so they came over and basically while we were printing, after it came out, somebody would fold it. They would push it over. Somebody would stuff it in the envelope. The next person would rip the sticker. Ripped. I got. I couldn't lick that many. Right, your mouth gets really dry. So I got the ones that you can just peel the thing off. The next. That's the next person's job. The next person is to fold it over. They shove it over the next person. They're putting the stamp on it. The next person is writing. No, no, no. They were already written. No, they were printed. I I figured out how to freaking shove envelopes into the printer and print my handwriting stuff on it. Awesome. Uh, so they were. They already had the address and everything on it. So as soon as that person put on their. Uh, on the stamp, they would stuff it in the box that I would that I would drop off at the post. It was terrible. Uh, so I had these Marines and their spouses over for probably like eight hours, six six or eight hours. Uh, I had to buy pizza twice and and go take a break to get more Monster. It was miserable. Uh, I did that twice. I've never done it again after after that. Actually, I can honestly say I've outsourced it completely. I've never done. I've never t I've never seen it until it's in the mail. Uh, after that because it was just that was a good learning experience where you, you just simply can't do this you, there's not enough time and there's a, definitely a higher and best use of my time as a business owner than freaking <laughs> peeling some stupid how many do you think you got out i'm curious do you know uh in total yeah, well in that like eight hour window how many oh we finished the whole campaign it was, it was almost four thousand <laughs> i mean that's <laughs> that, that's awesome and for what 60 bucks an hour that's not terrible at all we were going uh, lightning lightning speed yeah <laughs> i love it that's so crazy but it was significantly cheaper <laughs> yeah but what's crazy to me about that is that i don't think you would have gotten started on the drive for technology without that i mean you might have known somewhat no you're absolutely right burning out on that was like 100 okay, there's gotta be a better way yep so then yeah. the next time you and i sit down it's like christmas time here in hawaii so we're yeah. you know, doing what you do in hawaii where you're in the Board flip shorts and flip flops hanging out in front of a burger shop for meetups yep. at Christmas time because um, my family was out of town. And you're telling me about what you did with this website and how you're about to launch. And it, yeah. it was incredible. So let's hear a little bit about that story because that's just awesome. Yeah. So before I get into that, I, oh, yeah, there, yeah. Was a, there was a transition phase actually where I was, um, so I'm going to try to provide some value here. I use Carrot. I use on Carrot to host my website and they talk about in their training sending all if you're still if you're using a physical um what's it called physical marketing sending it to digital marketing so i was like yeah that's a freaking that's a, <laughs> a good idea obviously so i i started making different websites uh with different postcards so i was split testing so two two different websites with two different postcards each so four different variables uh to see which like split testing and seeing which variable um, they liked the best. And it was, it ended up being a massive waste of money, but that is by definition what a split testing is. If you have four variables, 75% of it's going to be a waste. Um, what a principle. Yeah. And uh, so, so I was sending postcards out, driving it to these different websites, carrot outperformed the other website, like th literally thousands to one. Um, so I dropped that after like three months of doing that. That's when I started talking to you and I was like, all right, I'm convinced that carrot actually is the best uh, converting website. I get more clicks. I get more conversions, more conversions equals more money. Um, so I was like, I'm all in with, with this carrot website. I'm going to 
like really, really hit it hard with content, going through each page, like nitty nitty gritty, <laughs> changing, you know, categories, titles, tags, metadata, the freaking pictures, you know, like this is a little ninja tip going in and naming your picture before you upload it to your website, simply naming your picture rather than having it be, you know, like one C E D seven, two, whatever, like that's a bunch of crap. Rename that thing to whatever keyword you want to be ranking for on that page, uh, throw it up there and it's going to help you. Um, so yeah, I did that. I went or whatever they call it. Yeah. Uh, so I, I did that to, for every page, every content, every blog, like all of it. Um, and worked my way pretty quickly up to, uh, rank like three, four and five. Um, yeah, so leads started coming in, like really it was faster than I could handle it. And, uh, that month in December and in January, that's when we were transitioning, we we're adding three new members to the team. Um, and, and that's something that I want to talk about later actually. Uh, but that, that was like super, it was good timing because I can't handle it all like full-time job in the military. Uh, you need to have that team available to be taking those leads and following up and stuff. That's cool. <clears throat> so you hired three team members um, and then you started getting these leads and you were ranking in Google. Uh, we didn't, I don't think we mentioned this. We mentioned that you're out here, but I just want to emphasize for those who are listening to this, that when he says he ranked three, four and five, which it gets better uh, in Google, we're talking about Oahu, which is one of the most expensive markets in the nation and also one of the biggest hotbeds for wholesaling, fix and flip, because there's a spread here. A lot of places you might make, you know, ten, twenty thousand dollars. Out here, these guys are not touching flips if they're not making six figures. Six the figures. big players are making over a hundred thousand dollars a flip. Yep. So to rank in a market where people are profiting like that shows you A, it he knows what he's doing, and B, this is probably an underutilized strategy, which is super crazy because this is the way of the future, right? Direct mail is just not as yep. efficient as Google and we'll get into that in a minute. But right. uh, so hiring the team members, what did, uh, yeah. how did that go? Uh, well, it's easy because we're all in the military. So each one of us, each one of the males, I should say, and then our, our spouses, um, each one of the males, like if you're in it, so we have two Marines and one sailor, um, but that sailor has been attached to a Marine uh, unit for like forever. Um, so he's, he's a CB oh, right and, and, uh, th there's, there's a, a true testament of like, if you've been through like, I can't even say like boot camp, like whatever boot camp is freaking three months. Who cares? It's the crap that you have to deal with for at least four years after that, that really like builds up some grit. You're able to push through when you don't want to. You're able to work when you're not getting paid. You're able to take some hits, take some, you know, lower your pride, humble yourself a little bit uh, and sit down and just speak, be real with each other, you know? And I can, I can talk to each one of these guys and be like, hey, gents, like I need you to, to, to pull a little bit harder. <laughs> you know, here's, here's where I can see uh, where I think that you could be doing a little bit better. And that's something that we're all used to in the military, especially the Marine Corps. Uh, I can't really speak for the other branches, but like correcting Marines <laughs> is a, is a pretty regular thing. Um, so just, just sitting down and having that talk is good. But most, I think most importantly is the, is the work ethic that backs their everyday um, tasks, like the grit behind it. I love it. It's unstoppable. And then obviously there's my wife and then the, uh, the, our Navy cat, his girl. Um, so my wife and her are both realtors. They're kicking it really good on the MLS. Um, so in addition to all the off marketing stuff I'm doing, they're doing all the on marketing stuff, scrubbing the MLS every day. They have a team of real estate agents, uh, working with them to do that as well. Um, but having, having this team, we just, we divide and conquer with a unified, uh, vision that's what it is so every week we have meetings I'm a, as soon as i get off this podcast with you i'm going downstairs i've given myself a 15 minute buffer window and then we're kicking a 12 hour meeting no joke 12 hours uh we did it we do it once a month ish um but we're closing on a pro or we just finished flipping a property 
And uh, so it's time to, to debrief. It's also the top of a new quarter. Um, so let's reflect on last quarter, big wins. Uh, what are the things that you know went, went poorly? Big learning mistakes. Um, what is the vision for uh, this quarter? What's the vision for the, the latter half of the year? And what's the vision you know, two week, or excuse me, two years from now? Um, so having that unified front and then going out and on your day-to-day -day things, like we don't need to be having, we all live in different areas, so we don't have a daily meeting. <clears throat> we have tons of group chats, uh, but having, having those people, like, you know, they got your back and, and they're hustling just as hard as you are. Holy crap, that was a game changer for us. Yeah, that's, that's super cool. And I like the fact that you mentioned, so, and the other thing the military offers, especially when you're active duty, you mentioned, you know, work for free. Um, a lot of people don't even have that luxury if they were willing yeah. to do so. Whereas we, you know, if you waste two hours working on something that might pay you in the future, you're still getting paid, right, by the other job. And yeah. Uh, let's be real. We're we're used to wasting two hours at work sometimes. Mm -hmm. So wasting two hours off work that for something that might pay you extra is really not that bad a deal. Yeah. All right. So you hire these guys, which and I, you mentioned the agents. I think that's a really brilliant setup for those of you listening who get into like wholesaling, because um, you'll realize a lot of these leads they're not they're not going to sell for a price that you could flip, but they will if yep. they're willing to sell. Work with your significant other who's a real estate agent. So that's a huge way to increase their sales and profits. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Okay. So you now rank a little bit higher in Google, a little bit higher every day. Every, how like, did seriously, <laughs> how, how, what did you do to start creeping up on that? Cause I know you're chasing someone down. Um, yep. and how has that one little shit, like how big of a change is it going from, you know, number four, three to where you are now? All right. So when I, when I was number three, I've, I've been number three now for, for quite a while. And that's really frustrating, right? So you're like, there, there's a part of me that's like, this is a blessing. I'm number three. There's only one person above me who has rank one and two. Uh, so I'm getting a lot of traffic. If they click on his site, more than likely, they're also going to click on my site. But at the same time, I'm frustrated because there, it, statistically, there's a 20% uh, difference between the two and I want to be free I want <laughs> and let me clarify what I just said he has one and two and I have number three the sum of these against this is a 28 percent difference so there are 28 percent that's a lot that's a lot yeah. of leads that I'm missing out on because they see him as a as a a credible uh dominant you know authoritative person who who is providing that he's doing great he's a good friend of mine um but at the same time i live here he doesn't no. so i'm gonna flip that crap uh, <laughs> so as as soon as i jumped and i went from number three to number one uh the phone was ringing off the hook the, the first day uh two wholesalers had called me so i'm pretty much uh, we're getting on average like just about three and a half leads a week that's pretty normal and to be honest that hasn't changed much it may have gone up but once again I only got the first rank uh, just recently not uh, long enough to really track my KPIs and the leads coming in the conversion rate for those leads and stuff but uh, the and at the same in addition to that I should say I'm I have limited um, keywords that are one. I still have some that are two and still have some that are three and still have plenty down here. But the ones that I really want are, are now one, two, and three. And these twos and threes are like very quickly becoming ones and twos. And then the twos are becoming ones. It's really like I'm picking up pace in Google and soon enough, I'd like to be launching in, in different markets, you know, in California, in Ohio, in Washington, Alaska, you know, that type of stuff. Um, and as soon as I become a dominant player, like in the, in the what do we call it nationwide like real estate like big big fish players holy crap i'm like don't freaking mess with me yeah, i'm coming i'm uh, coming to remind you that we were friends before you were there yeah. uh, that's what i'd like to do i mean that's where i, I kind of see this going because the momentum is building very quickly uh and, yeah and it, it's been like three months four months yeah, you yeah. went from and I'm going to spit your numbers and then you can expound on this. But you went from yeah. four months ago, us talking about how you'd spent 
thousands, literally thousands of dollars on mail outs and seeing a very small return because yeah. they, they're saturated to, okay, I'm launching this thing and we're going to see what happens to three, four months down the road because you launched closing a deal, two more about to close and like 70, yeah. was it 74 leads 74. in the last like months that you're following up with? And that's not even including what your wife's working. I mean, that's in three, four months time and you only just hit number one. That's huge, especially because we're, again, rem reminder, we're not talking two, three, four, five thousand dollar properties in the middle of bum crap, Arkansas. We're right. talking hundreds yeah. of thousands of dollars in potential in Hawaii. Right. But with that being said, for the people who are listening in whatever you just said, bum crap, Arkansas. Yeah, I tried uh, to edit myself there from what I actually uh, would call my home state sometimes. Oh, uh, gosh. Uh, so, so with that being said though, there's a lot of deals that I don't get into. I will simply state, you know, like, Hey, right now, it doesn't sound like you're going to be able to come down to the number that we want. You know, if something, you know, changes in the future, you know, I'm, I'm still interested, but there's a lot of, uh, a lot of people that are contacting me saying that they want to sell my house, but the situation or the motivation just simply isn't there for me to get in, or I should say these may be here, but they're not willing to come down the price, which shows a true indication of one of these two. Um, but the price just isn't there. So it's not safe. Like that. So y'all in, in different areas of the United States, uh, you may be happy with a $40,000 spread. So let, let's say your, your net profit, your projected net profit is like $50,000. Would I take a deal if I were going to make $50,000? If it was guaranteed, yes, I would, but nothing in life is guaranteed. So if I'm about to leverage a million dollars to make $50,000, you know how quickly the market shift? No, let's not even talk about market shifting. Let's talk about opinions. Like to, <laughs> how long am I going to have to hold that the property and think about the holding costs for one month on a million dollar property? Do the math. <laughs> yeah, we're, and we're and how many six seven grand yeah how many months am i gonna have to hold it for the right buyer to come across my desk and and say hey this is you know i, I want to purchase this property at market you know at market value which is list price <clears throat> so it's, it's just not worth it so I, I need to see that as david was talking about earlier that six figure of spread if not more um for me to be able to get into a property and an example of that would be uh an arv of uh what was that property in diamond head arv of 1.95 uh purchase price 161 repairs eight thousand dollars not really wow. a flip it was it That's, was uh awesome is what that it, is it was amazing but if you like look at those numbers 161 to 195 and that's a very conservative arv once again we're dropping everything could it have sold for 2.05 yes but i just want you to think about what i just said that's a hundred thousand dollars of just whimsical like <laughs> on the daily the market is soft when once we once you start pumping once you add a zero right to uh to california's arvs or texas arvs whatever you add a zero the market starts getting really really soft here and literally it could fluctuate by a hundred, if not hundred and fifty thousand uh, dollars, just because somebody wants to offer less. And if you've been holding that property for five months on the market, because that's going to be your average hold time for the minimum hold time for a property of that size, you're going to take it, and you're going to take a hundred thousand dollars less than what you were expecting. So you need to be prepared for that. You need to have that buffer. So I don't want that to be discouraging to you. Uh, I'm saying no to a lot of these deals that are coming in they're not deals i should say leads that are coming in uh because the spread isn't enough uh so i only need to to flip like five properties in a year to make what what i want to be making you in in different in different states probably need to be flipping 15 properties to be making what you want to be making uh could i flip 15 if i wanted to I don't think so. Can you flip 15 if you wanted to? If you do this, if you if you bring your all of your 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 data, if you will, online, your marketing online, you're tracking your KPAs online, you're sending traffic online, uh, it's it's going to benefit you a lot more than it has me. All in in an, another way that maybe you don't understand because Oahu 
is very much behind the times when it comes to technology. Like people literally have flip phones and don't have emails. They have boxes on the backs of their computers. Um, these are all normal things that blows my mind, right? Because I don't run, I, the oldest computer that I remember is Windows 95, 98, one, one of those two. Um, I was like a small kid, you know, like playing with a floppy disk. I barely remember these days, but people like legit, maybe they don't have a Windows 98, but, but they have an old computer and an old monitor and, and, yeah. and that's pretty normal here. So, so the technology, it hasn't really hit in Oahu and I'm kind of on the, the tip of the spear, get it? Uh, Marine Corps. <laughs> uh, the, the leading, I'm on the, I'm on the cutting edge of, of technology when it comes to uh, Oahu. However, all this stuff is is already there on the mainland. Um, so if you get into technology, it's going to hit like that. You're going to become successful like that. Um, with that being said, it's not. I shouldn't. I shouldn't say that actually because it took me uh, one year and eight months to get where I am in the SEO realm, and that was just me doing it until December of last year. Actually, I'm still just doing the, the marketing and, and the, and the, I don't know, the nerdy stuff on the computer. The other guys are, are taking stuff off my hands when it comes to following up with leads and, and things like that. But it's only been me online doing for a year and a year and eight months doing the, the SEO and stuff. I wasn't outsourcing it. I'm pretty slow. I'm working, you know, 12, 14 hour days is pretty normal for me. Um, so I'm just grinding at night, you know, and that that's what has happened. So could that be massively uh, pick, you know, picking up in speed? Yes. By outsourcing, by being more dedicated to doing it, having more time to doing it uh, and not making the stupid mistakes that I made. Absolutely. But nonetheless, the beauty is that you now have, so now that you rank, once you rank, it's not, I mean, you still have to maintain, but, but yes. it's not like direct mail where you have to sweat shop your way through a Saturday to find more leads. Exactly. You can go to sleep yes. and wake up and have a lead, which yep. is super cool. So I think long-term, the efficiency that you Definitely. have built is going to pay off massively, especially when, uh, if and when you transition out of the military and have time on your side. Yeah. Yep. Awesome. Definitely. So those... Uh, yeah, just to be talking about numbers really quickly, the, the KPIs that you'll track if you're doing direct mail is going to be depending on the mail house that you're using. And if you're doing, you know, like professional letters, vice, yellow letters, vice, a postcard, vice, a brochure, you know, it's going to be more expensive than all those things. Uh, your, your, the amount that you're going to be spending is going to be like 129 to 189. And then you have to touch that person six to 10 times. So now you're spending like, dude, that's like 15 bucks. I don't, that's just for one lead. If I spend, and if I'm 15 bucks for one lead and I'm sending it out to 4,000 people, I'm not very smart, but I think that's $6,000. Um, it's up there. Whatever. Y'all can do the math later. Yeah, that's uh, more so like $60,000. So if, if I spend that much money, <clears throat> just for one campaign and I have bad data, you know, the list that I pulled is crap. The skip tracing service that I pulled is crap. I'm not using effective um, direct mail so they don't open it or they don't read it. Uh, and they don't take action to go online and online my web presence is crap. There's too many variables here to have to discourage somebody from opting in. And it's basically cold, mar it's cold marketing. You don't know if that person is motivated. They could be totally fine. You just bought their, their name on a list. So compare everything that I just said to $6,000 spent on SEO, hiring that out to make it go quicker. Uh, and then it's not going to be bad data because the people searching you are obviously motivated to sell their house. And there isn't all of these different variables of bad data, bad skip tracing, a non-converting um, uh, letterhead or, you know, copy on your marketing. And then you get to the last one of, is your website crap? There's too many variables before that. If your website's crap, your website's crap. Get a new website, get carrot. Um, so pushing it uh, to the left, you know, to SEO, $6,000 here, 
is also, uh, it's not just good for that one lead. Like, and it's not just good for that 4,000 leads. It's good for years to come of all the people who are, who are searching things. So when it, when it comes to tracking your ROI on the money that you're spending, it's going to be significantly higher. Uh, doing any form of online marketing, any form of online marketing than it is offline. Yeah. It's still funny to me that I see your ads all over the place. I'm like, Hey, I know that guy. Do you really? Oh, yeah, cool. I still see, uh, I still see some, on, some on Facebook, some on Google. I have, I have definitely clicked through to look at your site. Good. Um, you know, because I'm like, Oh, well, he's except that I, you know, I probably owe you like a dollar for clicking on your, you're gonna, <laughs> not, not be happy, but yeah, I'll buy you a beer before I leave. All right. <laughs> no, that's super cool. All right. So, I could talk about this all day because I am like we talked about before we started recording. I have just paid for some SEO optimization from another, you know, renowned individual who does good things with it and it's paying off and I'm excited to start ranking in Google. Um, yeah. I'm probably going to be setting up a separate website in the town that I intend to move to when I get out of the military so that I can start that process now. Uh, so I may pick your brain a little bit more about that offline. Definitely. Um, that being said, there are two or three questions I'd like to get to before we wrap this up because Definitely. You know, I always ask, um, and I gave you the questions and then we have, <laughs> I need to just stop giving people these questions because <laughs> I'm like having too much fun asking about specific things yeah. that I don't ever get to these questions. But uh, if, if a young E1, E2, 18 to 20 year old person was to walk up to you and ask you for advice, you only had a few minutes, what would you tell them? It would be very simple. Read books. I think that that has been the biggest thing in the military. We're taught, you know, have a mentor, look up to your, uh, your senior leadership, you know, trust your senior leadership. They're going to be the example. But so often, and I'm not saying that your leadership in the military is bad. What I am saying is there's better, you know? So what, and I'm, once again, I'm not trying to throw people under the bus. I'm not trying to be rude. What I am saying is if somebody has taken 50 years of their life, summed it into two books about something very specific, that is wisdom that I'm not going to find in the military. Why? Because you're freaking retired by the time you're 50. And you certainly didn't spend a year writing down your, your thoughts. It's going to be, you know, a hip pocket class or whatever it's not well thought out. It's not um, condensed content. So, so reading books is going to be the best way and the fastest way that you can grow yourself, yourself to become the leader that people want in the military, as well as growing your side hustle. Well, and you know, you've said the leadership may not be, well, the thing is, if you think about it, like, like John Maxwell, right? He's like a icon of, of leadership yeah, and leadership. book writing. And you look at, General Mattis, who's like an icon of leadership in the Marine Corps, who are yep. both, I mean, the two of them could probably have a conversation that would blow yep. our minds, right? Yep. But one of them has written like 30 books because that's yep. what he does. And the other one has not had time to write books because yep. he's a Marine Corps general, secretary of defense. And you are never going to be able to sit down with him, but you <laughs> no. can sit down oh, personally I... and have John Maxwell. He, well, I shouldn't say personally because he's not reading his own. I listen to audiobooks. I don't have time yeah, to listen yeah, to thing. read books. So, like, you can personally sit down, and Tony Robbins will speak to you. You know, like exactly. there, there's no better way to start your morning. <laughs> yeah, nope, I'm the same way. Except you have a longer commute, so you probably read more than I do. But yeah, yeah, I need a, I need a longer commute again. But I agree. All right, so, so reading books—that's my yeah. advice. Awesome, um, and I'll give you a chance to recommend one here in a minute. Okay. Uh, cool. What is one thing you wish the military had taught you about real estate, finances, whatever? So I don't expect the military to teach me about real estate. Oh, However, I've been prefacing that question that way for like the last four shows and everyone's been like, no, I think that's a good question. And then the first time I don't preface, <laughs> I, 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 I agree with you. I, I just think it's a fun question. Yeah. So. <laughs> However, finances is like a basic thing that I think would be, I know would be beneficial to be doing it and it's like if some if you have a marine or a sailor airman army camp soldier that's what you call army guys uh who, who's failing in finances it's going to make them you know less effective in the workplace they're going to be failing missions they're going to 
and they're going to be pulling people with them, right? Who are whatever. So that's going to be difficult. So teaching, teaching finances um, is a thing. So the, the source, the resource that I will give you is the one that I personally use and it's mint. Um, I have, I think 37 different um, accounts, uh, whether they be checking savings, personal business, uh, mutual funds, freaking cryptocurrency, you name it, 37 accounts. I cannot keep track of all of them. They're all on different platforms. They're all with different banks. Um, Mint, I have them all synced together. If I charge any card, if I, you know, write a check, whatever, it's going to be marked down in Mint. You can categorize it. You can classify it. You can, you can tag it. You can put notes. You can do anything that you want. Um, but having a budget of this is what I'm going to spend on whatever, my housing, my food, my clothing, my gas, my bills, my phone, my internet, you name it, like it's all in there. And that, I mean, that's going to be what's ultimately sets you up for success. Because if you are making $100,000 a year, but you're spending 110, you're wrong. Um, so having a budget uh, and, and using Mint to know that you know it's it's bulletproof you have a, a foolproof way of saying yeah i have all these accounts but this is a sum summary of all of them and it's pretty much instant uh, as soon as i charge my card mint gets updated um so that's something that i i think should be almost like for, forced upon us in the military like everyone's gonna have uh, a mint account and then at that point whatever if you decide not to use it that's on you and you can come to me when you're Finances are jacked up, but at least setting setting Marines up for success and saying have this account, ha, you know, create a Mint account, attach all your accounts to it, um, and create a budget. That way, you know, eight months from now, if you're having issues, we can see your tendencies on each month, and we can kind of diagnose and and create a plan of action to to correct that. Yeah, I use Personal Capital, which is a very similar platform. Yep. And yep. They're, they're both phenomenal. Fantastic. Anything like it, yeah. The only reason I still use personal capital and haven't really messed with Mint is because I already set everything up, so it's like, yeah. Yep. But they're both, I hear great things on both. All right, so um, I think we already covered what makes your method of investing unique because uh, nobody does what you're doing. But yeah. um, we're going to, let's go to uh, the one resource, book, course, website, whatever that you would recommend for anybody if you started. If you haven't already read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, which is pretty much what gets you, every real estate investor that I have ever met has read rich dad poor dad it's the it's what turned me on to real estate investing when i was 19 years old i think i was 19 um as soon as i read it i immediately got hooked on robert kiyosaki read the rest of his books joined his his coaching his training um joined fortune Millers, you know and just a slew of of everything came as a result of that over the, over the last several years. Um, so Rich Dad, Poor Dad, if, you, if you've already read that one, uh, there's, look at that, business call right now. I know, I'm sorry. I'm, uh, that's like, okay. I, sh I needed to cut this short. I didn't know. See, the, the thing is it rings my wife's phone number as well, so she just picked up. <laughs> um, so if you, if you haven't, if you have already read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, uh, so Robert Kiyosaki is a, is a super phenomenal writer. He like genuinely, he's a very good writer as well as has a lot of knowledge and wisdom um, and experience in the real estate industry. So read his books and then anything that is Tony Robbins. I'm like a massive Tony Robbins fan. And I would venture to say I've read almost all of his books, probably like 90% of his books uh, and his, his courses, his classes, his blah, 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 blah. I've done it. I love him. Um, so those are the two people that have grown me faster than anybody else. Uh, and, and the difference between like these two and the next, you know, 40 other authors, or it's significantly larger than 40, but there is a massive difference between, I've read a lot of books. I love reading books. Um, however, those two like really, really set, set me up for success. Right on. All right. So, because I know that we talked too long before I started recording, so you're going to not have your 15 minute buffer. <laughs> Uh, where can people get a hold of you? Uh, so if you want to check out my website, you can search sell my house on Oahu. Um, if you want to see how good my SEO is, think like you want to sell your house on Oahu. <laughs> Type something into Google and I'll show up. 
Um, but the name of our company is Crown Properties and Crown is spelled like Old English. So it has an E at the end, C-R-O-W-N-E, Properties. Um, but it's gonna be fairly easy to find us online. You search anything, it's gonna come up. Job. Crown Properties, sell my house on Oahu. That's awesome. That's a good feeling. Cause uh, like for Instagram now, people will ask me like, what's your handle? You know, I'm going to follow you. And I'm like, Oh, just type in the word from M I L. They're like, huh? I'm yeah. like, yeah, I'm number one. Just type in from mill. <laughs> and it's a good feeling to know, like, you know, I yeah. can type the same thing into Google and I'll pop up and it's no longer yeah. like, okay, it's www. Yes. Oh man. That's hey, such a good feeling. Go type this in. And yep. So that's yep. cool. Awesome. Well, Hey, I'm going to let you get to your 12 hour, 12 hours. Dude. Um, Doing it. but I am going to tell you before I stop recording that my last meetups on Tuesday and you should come. Uh, okay. I'm Good deal. <laughs> and, then, uh, and then we got to catch up before I leave. So, all right. Excellent. Thank you very much. Thanks for your time, David. Appreciate it, brother. Thank you for listening to another episode about my journey from military to millionaire. If you liked it, be sure to visit from military to slash podcast to subscribe to future podcasts. While you're there, we'd love for you to rate the show, give us a review on iTunes. Now get out there and take action.